Has that helped you in any way to tell your story to other people? Has that helped in the healing process, do you think? To uh, yeah, yeah, it does. It's, um, it's, it's also not only the healing process for myself, but it's a determination as well that this should never, ever happen again to anyone. And that's the big problem, you see, because it's not, uh, uh, you know, people involved in crime that this happens to. This happens to anybody at any time for any reason. And, you know, tomorrow or it could be somebody else today, you know, it could be a different person entirely. And it depends who they decide to, you know, who they decide to nick at the time. And they've done it time and time and time again. Like they've decided this is who we're going to nick. It's not the evidence tells us this is somebody or not somebody, it's who they decide. And that can be just about anybody. Did you meet anybody in prison that, or did you meet many people in prison that were absolutely adamant that they were innocent, that um, would talk to you about their experiences as well, or did you feel quite isolated in that way? Or? Uh, uh, many, many times I actually felt really very, very badly isolated, mainly because I started off as a juvenile, so it's, you know, some time before I actually went into the adult system and then the dispersal system, mm. before I actually started meeting up with these kinds of people. and. Uh, basically being educated by them as to you know what's going on what to do about it you know so uh, that was a long long process but yeah I met quite you know quite a few people there but you know people seem to imagine that everybody in prison claims that they're innocent you know it wasn't me I didn't do it and you know people really really don't because there's no point because yeah, the people prison. you're trying to con are the people who've done exactly what you've done you know, and, and, and they know, they know. You don't have to say you've done it or haven't done it, <laughs> they know, mm. you know, and that's where sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of the support actually comes from because the people you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, i.e. the other cons, they know, mm. they know. And um, do you work now? What, what do you no, do day-to-day? Um, I help out in my mate's pub and he lets me live in his house and that's how I basically survive down here. But um, I couldn't, I, I couldn't really work on a, on a sort of like nine to five sort of basis thing. Um, mainly because the number of times when I actually feel so bad about myself and uh, I find it so difficult to cope on a day to day basis that I couldn't really do it. I mean, I, I'll, I'll go walk about and you know, I'll, I'll just wander off for three days, three weeks at, at a time. And you've never been offered kind of therapy or counselling or did you feel like when you no. left prison, you were just literally on your own, you didn't have... Yeah, I felt I was completely and utterly on my you. own. I didn't think anybody was interested and I don't think anybody has been in interested since. They're not. You know, when you're, when you're released, you'd imagine that, you know, they'd want to make sure that you know, everything that can possibly be dealt with is. You know, it actually couldn't really be further from the truth. They don't actually make sure of very much at all. Mm. What are your, your kind of future ambitions in life? I know you want to go travelling and see the world. Yeah, I, I want to travel at the minute and I want to see lots of different things and uh, different cultures and different worlds. And in some ways as well, he's actually get as far away from where I've been as possible because all my life I've never had a sense of place or a sense of belonging so for me to be in one place or another doesn't really mean that much there's no place I can actually uh, go to and say this is where I belong because I don't really belong anywhere mm -hmm. I've never belonged anywhere you know I've always been in prison and I certainly didn't belong there so I find it very, very difficult to lay down roots and um, it makes me extremely restless. And, you know, uh, I think the only way to deal with that at the minute is to, you know, is to go travelling. Yeah. You know, throw a rucksack on my back and just go and see what I see, see, see what's out there. Am I right in saying that you also write poetry? Is that something that you have uh, done or you still do? Yeah, it's something I've always done. It was. Uh, being in prison I wasn't I wasn't that literate when I actually first went to prison and didn't really get any kind of education while I was there 
um, I had to educate myself and be educated by the people around me. You know, there's actually some really quite intelligent people within the prison system and, uh, you know, people from different viewpoints and different lives and different countries and different cultures. And yeah, so I learned uh, quite a lot, but, you know, learning to read properly was, you know, my biggest escape, really. Mm. And I, you know, I read. I've read books and books and books and books and books and books. And I actually struggle with it now, which is, you know, quite difficult. I really do struggle to read now. Too far, to, far, far too distracted. And when uh, you're actually reading, you mean you can't sort of keep your mind on? Yeah, on I what get you're really, reading. really distracted at the moment, and I've I've found it difficult to read for, you know, uh, uh, a good two two years now or something. I still read, but I find it quite difficult. But so yeah. not physically reading, but the actual act of yeah. taking your mind completely yeah. into that yeah. that story or whatever you're reading. Yeah because it's difficult to actually let go of what's going on in my head and whereas uh, where I was actually there, I was actively fighting it, whereas now I'm not actively fighting it, you see. Mm. There's was that strange, not to have, not to be fighting for something the worst constantly, thing. just to literally be yeah. free and it to do what you want? It was the worst thing, it was the worst thing and uh, it was actually one of the dangers that was identified of me actually leaving prison was that uh, if I won my case, I'd no longer have anything to else to the left to fight, and the risk of suicide was higher than ever, which is what they all thought I would do. They thought I'd be released from prison and commit suicide. Mm. 